Hey guys, I want to do a video and look at the Statue of Liberty and look at it in context with the study we've been doing. Has the Millennial Kingdom of Christ already occurred and already now in Satan's little season? And I think that the Statue of Liberty has been set up to represent the time that we're in, Satan's little season. And I think that this is a symbol of this time, of this time of deception. And I want to show you its origins. I want to show you what I think it represents, the time that we're in, and show a historical timeline of other figures and statues that we've seen in our past. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. And so let's get started. Let's start in Babylon. And this is the image of gold described in Daniel 3 that Nebuchadnezzar made and declared for all people in his province to bow down to. This is the image of gold, 90 feet tall, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow the knee to. But in all the artistic depictions that I typically see of Nebuchadnezzar's golden image, they all look like this. It looks like a Babylonian king with a long beard and Babylonian features. Here's another rendition of the image of gold with Daniel 3.1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, the height of which was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. This is not the image of gold that Nebuchadnezzar set up. And so I wanted to show you this because this slide has it wrong. This shows Nebuchadnezzar's statue and it says Daniel 3.1-18. through 18. But this is the image, the statue, that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed in Daniel 2. This is different. This is the image that Nebuchadnezzar had that Daniel interpreted with the head of gold being Babylon, the arms and chest of silver being Medes and Persians, the loins of brass being the Greeks, the legs of of iron, the Roman Empire, and the feet and toes of iron and miry clay being the Roman Empire mixed with the children of Israel, Jerusalem. And we've talked about that on other videos within the study, but this is the stone that broke the feet of iron and miry clay together concurrently, toppling the beast system and at that time, the stone became a great mountain throughout the earth. This is the end of the beast system. This is the fall of Rome. This is the destruction of Jerusalem. And this is the beginning of the millennial kingdom. But getting back to Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar's image of gold that he did build, that we see in Daniel 3, this is Shamash. The Babylonian god who Nebuchadnezzar worshipped. He built temples to this god. And what does this god look like? It looks exactly like the Statue of Liberty. Here's another image of Shamash. Again, it looks exactly like the Statue of Liberty. This is the clay tablet or cylinder that was found in Iraq. And the interpretation of it reads, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, am I, the temple of Shamash, are restored as it was before for Shamash, my lord. So here it shows that Nebuchadnezzar restored a temple, a temple of worship for the god Shamash. So when we go back and look at the image of gold, that we see in biblical literature, and it's always looks like this. What if instead it wasn't an image that looked possibly like a Babylonian king, but it looked like Shamash, the Babylonian god, and that it looked like this. And I think this is what it looked like. 
I think this is the image that was built at the time of Nebuchadnezzar on the plain of Dura in Babylon. This is the image that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow the knee to and therefore placed in the fiery furnace and the Son of God protected them from the flames of the furnace. This is Nebuchadnezzar that was on a coin found in 585, or this is from 585 BC, an onyx cameo of Nebuchadnezzar. And you can see the facial profile does not look like the Babylonian king that we've been accustomed to see him with the long beard, but rather it looks exactly like the Statue of Liberty. It looks exactly like Apollo. Midras, Shamash, they're all one and the same. And so what if Nebuchadnezzar basically did not look like this, but was portraying himself to look like the God that he worshiped. And we've seen that in other cultures that that occurs. Uh, the Caesars, for instance, would do that with Apollo. But Nebuchadnezzar was raised for time of the children of Israel being in captivity and ultimately he judged other nations but then he was judged it was very similar as we see many times throughout the Bible and it leads me to thinking about does God the God of spirits raise spirits place them in flesh and blood at particular times to rule heathen nations for ultimately his glory and that at times throughout history in the past possibly currently and in the future are there non-humans are there spirits fallen angelic spirits that have been allowed to inhabit flesh and blood that God uses for his purpose we see in Romans 9, 17 and 18, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Then we see several times in the book of Exodus that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh multiple times. And Moses and Aaron would say, Let my people go. And he would not because his heart was hardened. Was this a spirit that was inhabiting Pharaoh, king of Egypt, at that time, ultimately for the purpose of God's glorification by delivering his children? And is that same spirit in the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar had a very interesting life for seven years of it he was a beast he was an animal and lived like an animal and so i think oftentimes there things are not as clear-cut and black and white as we might think when it comes to flesh and blood mortal and spiritual beings paul says that uh, we may be entertaining angels unawares you know, there may be the psychopaths in the world today. Some of them may not even be human. They may look human. They may be flesh and blood, but they may be allowed um, to inhabit that body for that particular time, for that generation in a particular region or nation, ultimately for the judgment of God and ultimately for his glory. But could Shamash, Mithras, Apollo, Lucifer all be one in the same? And that spirit has over time been raised up. You know, like it says in the book of Revelation at the time of the Roman Empire that the beast ascended from the bottomless pit. Was this beast the spirit of Apollo? Was he a God that was placed in the bottom of his pit and let out at times for these purposes?
throughout history. It's the false prophet the same way. If they have already been judged um, at the second coming of Jesus Christ, at the destruction of Jerusalem and fall of Rome, then right now they're in the lake of fire, and they have been judged. But it's the false prophet, um, a spiritual being, you know, and I've often wondered, was Judas the false prophet that arose again after um, he hung himself? Because Jesus called him a devil. He's like, one of you is a devil. And when he died, it says he went to his own place, which is a weird type of way of saying to the grave. So maybe he didn't ultimately go to the grave as a mortal human being. Maybe Judas was a fallen entity that was placed into flesh and blood to fulfill prophecy and that he returned as the false prophet and ultimately was judged in the lake of fire. But those are all speculation. Those are all possibilities. And there are other ways of looking at that for sure. Here is Egyptian gods, pharaohs that are being represented by very large statues. Again, you can see the height of them versus uh, normal human beings. Has this always um, occurred with these, these entities, these bigger-than-life entities that have ruled at certain times? Um, were they larger? You know, was Nebuchadnezzar um, taller than a normal human being? Was others that were placed in that same position in different eras, like Nebuchadnezzar, or was he taller? You know, like we see with um, King Og and King Sihon, and we know that giants were real. Um, that history's been hidden from us. Now, I don't think they were this big, um, but I think there is something to the stature um, of that. That may be why when Israel, children of Israel, ultimately demanded a king, they got the tallest person they could find. <laughs> they wanted to emulate these heathen nations. You know, they got King Saul. But moving on, down from the head of gold of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, we have the arms and chest of silver. This is the Persian god Mithras. And you can see Mithras, Shamash, Apollo, the Statue of Liberty, Lucifer, they're one and the same. And here is another picture of Mithras found in Iran. And you can see the features look just like Apollo. These features look just like the Statue of Liberty. Here's Apollo, a Greek bust of Apollo. That is Apollo in Greek culture. This is Mithras in Persian culture. They're one and the same. And there's Mithras Apollo today. Here's the painting of Lucifer. In 1797 and then the Statue of Liberty and you can see the similarities obvious similarities between the two you can see the male body the male jawline just like you see in the Statue of Liberty the Statue of Liberty is called Lady Liberty because this is what Luciferians do it's deception you can see the masculine qualities but yet feminine features that are built into this painting. And speaking of Lucifer, the passage in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. 
I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. I will be like the most high, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And it goes on from there. Many people will say that Lucifer is Satan, but it could be that Lucifer is Apollo, Apollyon, that, um, that, you know, you see these same words with Daniel 7, Daniel 11, speaking of the little horn, the beast, the Antichrist, which is not Satan. You know, Satan gives the little horn its power and authority, however that works. But this sounds very reminiscent of what the little horn says um, prior to little horn, the beast, and the false prophet going to the lake of fire at the second coming of Jesus Christ, which I think has already occurred. That judgment has already occurred. But this is King Shapur, a Persian king. Um, in the 200 BCs, this is a statue of him. So this is just to show that not only can Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians do this, uh, not only are we doing this today, but the Persians can build large statues too. And this is King Shapur, same statue in a cave of Iran. But what if... The Persians also built an image to Mithras and that there was a large statue such as the Babylonians had of Shamash and that we have today in the Statue of Liberty. What if this has been ongoing throughout the entirety of the beast system um, until its destruction and then we're seeing this again now that we're in Satan's little season says Albert Mackey in the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, there are none of the ancient mysteries which afford a more interesting subject of investigation to the Masonic scholar than those of the Persian god Mithras. And then we see the sculptor of the Statue of Liberty, the Freemason, Frederick Augustus Bartoli. And I guess I can move my... You can see... The Freemason pose there, which is very typical. It shows their allegiance, who they're in allegiance to. They're Luciferians. And we'll talk about Bartholdi in a bit. But let's move on now. We've seen Mithras, the Persian god. We've seen Shamash, the Babylonian god. Here's Apollo, the... God of the Greeks. And this is the Colossus of Rhodes. This is the artist's rendition of the Colossus of Rhodes. And it was said to be set on two pedestals and that ship sailed between its legs into the Greek harbor. This was said to be built. Um, I don't think that this was built at the time of Alexander the Great. I think it was built afterwards. Um, but that it stood for only 56 years, supposedly. I don't know how they know that other than putting together some spotty, um, um, you know, historical records of it. But to this day, nobody knows ultimately what happened to it, um, and where it is. But this is the Statue of Liberty. This is Apollo. This is the same as Mithras, the same as Shamash. And mankind has built these statues to Apollo for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. Here's another image of the Colossus of Rhodes. And you can see has the same pose with the flame of liberty 
in the right hand, the crown of the sun. You can see people in the forefront making um, possibly an image of the beast, a precursor. Um, there's coins from this time period showing um, Apollo there in Rhodesian coins. You can see people in this artist's rendition going up to the platform and bowing down and worshiping this idol. And again, a closer view of the coins. But the Colossus of Rhodes and the Statue of Liberty are one and the same. They represent the same entity. The Colossus of Rhodes was 108 feet tall. Statue of Liberty is 151 feet tall. Let's get to the Roman Empire. Has there been an image of the beast in the Roman Empire? Yes, there has. And it was built after 64 AD. It was known as the Colossus of Nero. And you can see an artist's rendition of the Colossus of Nero by the Colosseum. And what does it look like? It looks like Apollo. It looks like the Statue of Liberty. It looks like every other god that we've seen in the beast system's cultures. The Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. Revelation 13, 14, And he deceiveth them, the speaking of the false prophet, that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the womb by a sword and did live. And here is the base of the Colossus of Nero that's still standing today by the Colosseum. But here's another artist's rendition. This could possibly be the image of the beast that was described by John in the book of Revelation. This could be the image of the beast that required worship, that through the miracles of the false prophet did speak. And it was right by the Colosseum. And all this was destroyed at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The destruction of the Colosseum today, I think, is the aftermath of that time of the fall of Rome when all of this was destroyed, including the image of the beast. And the beast himself placed into the lake of fire. But the Colosseum that we see today in Rome was originally named the Flavian Amphitheater, but after the construction of the Colossus of Nero, which I think it may be the image of the beast, only then was this renamed the Colosseum. It was named the Colosseum because the Colossus of Nero was built adjacent to it. And here it is today. When we see a bust of Nero, and you will see a lot of pictures and uh, portraits uh, of Nero on coins that don't look like this. But I think, again, this is Nero requiring someone to portray him as Apollo. And you can see the lips, the facial features, the hair all resemble Apollo, the Statue of Liberty. And Nero was known to do that. Um, on coins, he um, often wore radiant crowns, such as the Statue of Liberty has, uh, and was depicted in this manner. And there is something very interesting uh, that we can look at later, maybe explore more about Nero, that there's a historical account of Nero Redivivus, which is a 
legend that when Nero died, that he would be resurrected from the dead. And so I find that to be very interesting, that that was a historical belief in light of John's prophetic passages in the book of Revelation, speaking of the beast that had a deadly wound and was healed and yet lived. All these are the same, though. Nothing new under the sun. This is Mithras. This is Apollo. This is Statue of Liberty. This is uh, Lucifer. Uh, this is Shamash. Shamash. And this is Frederick Augusta Bartoli, born in 1834, a Freemason and the French sculptor who supposedly sculpted the Statue of Liberty as a gift to the United States from France. My question is, did Bartholdi actually sculpt the Statue of Liberty? Or was he like most Freemasons and found it and repurposed it like previous Freemasons have done throughout the 17 and 18 and into the 1900s with old world buildings that they find, they say they built and founded and then repurpose them um, for something that it was not originally built for. But that's what Freemasons do. They find free masonry. And so did this French sculpture, who was a Freemason, did he even sculpt the Statue of Liberty? Or was it found? Was the Statue of Liberty actually remnants of the Colossus of Nero? Was it actually remnants of the Colossus of Rhodes that was found and then renovated and put back together? This is Edouard René de Labelle, the father of the statue. This is a French historian who thought it'd be a good idea for France to make a giant statue and give it to the United States to put in their harbor. Again, the whole story doesn't make sense. If you truly like just look at the history of the Statue of Liberty and how it came into existence, it doesn't really truly make sense unless you understand that the people that are doing this are Freemasons and that we're in Satan's little season and they are part of the Illuminati. This person right here was a Freemason. Laboulet was a Freemason. Bartholdi was a Freemason. Here's a plaque that was dedicated in 1984 commemorating the 100th anniversary of the cornerstone being laid at the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty. This was a dedication by Freemasons from the Grand Master of Masons in the state of New York. You can see Freemasonry all over the place from its origination to now with the Statue of Liberty. This is a poem called The New Colossus that was written by Emma Lazarus commemorating the Statue of Liberty, the New Colossus, as opposed to the Old Colossus, the Colossus of Rhodes, and the Little mention Colossus of Nero. And it reads, Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gate shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. So the imprisoned lightning, I find that interesting. Um, and her name, Mother of Exiles, it continues, um, from her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome, her mild eyes command the air bridged harbor that Twin Cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, she cries with silent lips. So to me, keep your storied pomp, you ancient lands, kind of reminds me of, all right, now that this new world order is beginning and this is a statue representing what we had in the past with the beast system before Jesus came and established his millennial kingdom at the destruction of the beast system when the stone 
hit the feet of Iron and Myrie Clay that we want this New World Order now to be expanded throughout the world, and we don't want to hear any mention of the past, this ancient land of yours, your your storied pomp, your your grandeur and glory of the past. We don't want to hear about that. We're not going to let anybody hear about it. We're going to call that the Dark Ages instead of what it was, the time of light with the millennial kingdom of Christ at hand. We're going to we're going to rewrite the history books. We're going to change times and laws. We're going to rewrite the history books. And this thousand year era where there were old world buildings, these angelic architecture, and all these developments that were going on, we're going to usurp them. We're going to found them. We're going to repurpose them at the end of the millennial kingdom. And now that it's Satan's little season when he's been loose, we're going to call that period of time, the Dark Ages. Your story pomp grandeur of light, we're going to call the Dark Ages. And that's what they've done. And they've hidden it from us. And it's taken a while, but they've hidden it from us now. But we're starting to find clue in on what season we are and what's occurred in our past. This is Emma Lazarus, by the way. I'll show you three pictures of Emma Lazarus. And just think about the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> just think about the painting of Lucifer. And then look at these pictures and tell me what you see. But this is illusion. We're in the magic kingdom of deception here in Satan's little season. And these are people that are part of of that system. Here is the hand and torch of the Statue of Liberty being displayed at the World's Fair in Philadelphia in 1876. This is 10 years before the Statue of Liberty was completed and erected in New York Harbor. But you can see uh, this was on display in Philadelphia at the World's Fair. And these World's Fairs were pretty spectacular. You can see a lot of buildings of the World's Fairs in Philadelphia in 1876. This is the Machinery Hall. This is the Agricultural Hall here. Here is Memorial Hall. This still stands today. This is an old world building that still stands today. The rest of these buildings have been destroyed. This is the horticultural hall. And this is the main exhibit building. This grand structure. You see horse and buggies throughout. And just a field. There's not even any roads to it. But yet they expect you to believe that Freemasons built this for the World's Fair just prior to it opening in 1876, before power tools were invented. Here is the head of the Statue of Liberty. And again, were these found after a period of time and renovated and then erected together? Did Bartoldi truly sculpt these? These don't look like French sculpture. To me, this looks very Romanesque. This looks very Greek to me. This looks like something that was done back in Greek and Roman times. This possibly could be renovation of the statue of Nero, the Colossus of Nero. This could be the Colossus of Rhodes that we have today sitting in New York Harbor. The image of the beast. This is the image of the beast. And here's some more photos of the 1878 Paris World's Fair. That's where this sat. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. But you can see these glorious 
architecture, these grand buildings. You can see that horse and buggies going up to this incredible building that they want us to believe uh, was built in the 1800s. It was built much earlier in Paris. I don't know if this still exists today, probably not. But this was built much earlier. You can see the spires, you can see the bell towers, you can see the cathedral look. This was built during the Millennial Kingdom of Christ. This was a source of energy. This is a source of free energy, um, a place of worship uh, during the Millennial Kingdom of Christ. That after the end of the Millennial Kingdom of Christ and the beginning of Satan's little season, Freemasons claimed it. They, they claimed it and named it, repurposed it um, for everything that they're trying to do in Satan's little season now. And we've talked about that a lot. Here's the Statue of Liberty today uh, on Ellis Island on a star fort. And there's been a lot of talk about star forts. That star fort was there. It was not built for the Statue of Liberty. Uh, it was built on a previously existing star fort. But that's the image of the beast right there. That is Apollo, Apollyon. And um, Lucifer, um, representative, body represent, a body, bodily representation of Satan. Um, and it's placed in New York Harbor now, which is um, obviously part of the United States. And the United States, I think, uh, is the Satan's Little Seasons Babylon. And this is where Satan's seed is today, I believe. You can see the symbology on the Statue of Liberty. Just to finish up, the chains on the feet. Uh, we know that um, the angel that had the keys to the bottomless pit bound Satan uh, with chains in the bottomless pit and after a thousand years uh, Satan was released for a little season this season that we're in this is representative of the chains um, that uh, were broken free from at the time of the ascension from the bottomless pit so we have Satan that was released from the bottomless pit uh, that is here today during this little season that's why we see all the deception that we see today, all the craziness in the world that we see today is because we're in that season. But this also, like we said, can represent the beast. It can represent Apollo, Mithras, Apollyon, which is the beast that is in the lake of fire. This could be homage to, again, the spirit that reigned throughout the beast system until its ultimate judgment and destruction. And then after the millennial kingdom, Satan, who was bound at that time, was released. The period that we're in now. So that's why there can be some overlap uh, between Lucifer, between Satan, uh, that serpent, the devil, because this could be homage to both, in fact. And so when we celebrate the 4th of July and we are celebrating in the United States, the independence that we have, the freedom, the liberty that we have, I think that truly we are unknowingly celebrating the time of Satan's release from the bottomless pit and that the Illuminati, these Freemasons that understand that, that are part of it, laugh every July 4th when fireworks are set off by the masses in celebration because they know truly this is the time that Satan was released from the bottomless pit. So 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. So this is who rules the world today. 
the angels of light and the ministers of righteousness. The ministers that say, I am doing this for your liberty, for your freedom. But don't believe they're Illuminati, they're Luciferians, and they do not have the best interests of humanity uh, at heart. So, like I said at the beginning, there's nothing new under the sun. I believe this is probably similar to what the image that Nebuchadnezzar built uh, in Babylon looked like in honor of his god Shamash. And we have the image of the beast currently in New York representing this time that we're in of Satan's little season. So we'll do another video soon. God bless.